Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Tiski Tutorials, and this is RZ Tuts 1, 1 of 1. So that means this is a Robot Zombies tutorial. This is the first chunk of videos, and this chunk of videos is only one video long, and this is the first video of only one video, and this chunk of videos is going to be going over uh, how the laser pointer was made inside of Robot Zombies. Um, and then I'm also going to be going over the flashlight, because that's extremely similar to how the laser pointer was made. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is, in this episode is going over um, light sources, uh, light cookies, um, and then uh, layers for the lights um, to make everything synchronize up and look the way it does inside of Robot Zombies. So inside of Robot Zombies you can see that um, there are two lights on every gun. There is a flashlight with a flashlight cookie on it, and that is a spotlight. So that means a light that gets uh, bigger uh, the farther away you get from the light source. And it's a, a round circle that gets bigger the farther away you get from the light source, and it also gets dimmer the farther you get away from the light source. And the angle of this light and distance of this light is adjustable inside of the inspector. And then when we apply a cookie to it, that means that the circular light turns into basically anything that we can create inside of Photoshop or any other equivalent program um, to create an image to show basically the shape of what we want the flashlight to look like. Um, because when you don't put a light cookie on it, it's basically a perfect clean circle and it doesn't it's not really realistic because when was the last time you used a flashlight and it was just a completely clean perfect circle there i mean i have never really even seen a flashlight like that there's always some kind of shape to it um so that's what we're going to learn how to create and then also the laser pointer uses a very similar technique and the laser pointer basically it's a directional light with a light cookie on it um, so for a first person shooter that works out okay um, because it is going to project an image on stuff that is behind our player uh, but that doesn't really matter because this is a single player game and you can't see what's behind you so it doesn't matter that we're projecting on an image onto stuff that's behind us because the player can't see that. The only thing that the light will actually project on that you can see is the gun. And the way that we fix that is basically we disable the gun layer um, on the calling mask of the light component on the directional light of the gun, which is the laser pointer. And we're going to be doing the same thing on the spotlight or the flashlight too, so that the flashlight doesn't actually shine on the gun, and it actually looks like it's projecting from the gun itself, rather than projecting from somewhere else. Um, so this is pretty easy to do, and then we're also going to be going over a little bit of code just to be able to turn on and off the flashlight and laser pointer independently uh, using keys uh, F, and I don't know what key we want to use for the laser pointer, maybe V or something, I don't know, we'll use some sort of random key, which will be rebindable, of course, to any key that you want. And that's going to be very, very simple code just to turn the laser pointer and flashlight on and off, and that will be very easy to do. And then I'm also going to quickly go over how to create the light cookies inside of Photoshop. Uh, but basically, I'm going to be focusing on what you want the final image to look like and the properties that you want your image to have, and the fact that light cookies are based off of the alpha rather than an actual black and white image. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything that we're going to be going over in this episode. So it's really not that hard to do. So we can cover this in one episode. So yeah, why don't we get to it and actually cut uh, the video of me and actually go into screen recording and learn how to do this inside of Unity. All right, here we are inside of Unity and inside of Robot Zombies. And here I have the rifle. And as you can see, I have a laser pointer and a flashlight on this, just like every other gun in this game. So, yep, the laser pointer and the light cookie will stretch over any surface depending on what angle you are actually looking at it. And it gives a pretty cool effect. Um, so the light cookie, as you can see, let me go down this long hallway so you can see how, how big and how far spread the light cookie on the flashlight gets, yet the aimer gets smaller the farther away you get, and as you get close, 
it can get big enough to cover up your entire screen. So the uh, spotlight gets bigger and the directional light stays the same size uh, as you get farther away. So it actually does look like it gets smaller the farther away it actually is and allows for more accurate shooting, I think. So yes, let's actually go over how this was actually made. So let me wait for the game to load inside of the Unity Editor. There we go. Okay. So I guess uh, let's start with the zombie gun. So I got to find the gun in here. Here we go. Oh, those are the bullets. And where are the actual guns? That's the pistol. Here we go. Zombie gun. So I'm going to drag and drop a zombie gun out here. Pull it up a little bit so that we can actually see it and then zoom into it a little bit. So, as you can see, actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see, it's a little bit, there we go, if I put it in front of something black, you can see it a little better. We have two lights on this gun. We have one projecting from here, and this is the flashlight spotlight light. And uh, it, as you can see, it angles outwards and it gets bigger the farther away you go. And as you can see from this big circle, I don't know if you can see the whole circle, it goes all the way around there. That shows how far the spotlight actually goes. And then this light right here, let me get a little closer, or at least try to. Okay, it stays the same size no matter what distance you are away from it. But as you can see, this is a directional light and all the lines are parallel and pointing in the same direction. So that signifies that it's going to stay the same size uh, no matter what, how far away uh, something is from it, it's just going to point in the same direction and keep going forever in both directions. This directional light also projects things behind it. So let's actually uh, find our zombie gun in the hierarchy, which is right here. And I have inside of the gun script all uh, the laser pointer right here and spotlight right here. So let's start with the spotlight and actually take a look at what this game object consists of. So first of all, it's a child of basically the gun itself. So no matter which way the gun moves, the uh, spotlight is going to follow. So it's just a game object that's a child and this object right here, shotgun body and hand RIK, um, these are objects that uh, basically define where the gun actually moves and all of that stuff. So we're going to make the spotlight, or the flashlight, a child of that. And as you can see right here, it's currently disabled, and that is because inside of the zombie gun script, I have a function which turns the light on or off. Um, so if we enable it right now, we can look over here and we can actually see where it's projecting and how it projects. And let me quickly... Uh, change this to none so that you can see what this light looks like without a flashlight cookie. So as you can see, it looks okay. Um, you can see like the bump mapping because this is a, uh, I have it set to real time only inside of the light mapping because I have a light mapping set up in this level um, or dual light mapping, I believe, set up in this level. Um, and then we have inside of the calling mask everything selected except for guns and if I have guns selected um, actually you can't see it that much but if I were to pull it back to like there as you can see it's lighting up the gun and we want to make it look like the flashlight is actually on the gun so that doesn't make a lot of sense so depending on where we actually want to position this gun uh, we typically are going to want it to be everything except for the gun so as you can see, when I turn the gun layer off, the actual uh, light doesn't project on the gun anymore. And let me select the actual gun model. Is that what I have selected? Yep, the skinned mesh render. There we go. Okay, so this object, which I have selected right here, is the object which is the gun itself. And as you can see right here, under layer, I have it set on the layer guns. So then when we have inside of here, 
guns unselected, this light won't project onto the gun anymore. And now let's take a look at the laser pointer, which is right here. And I'm going to enable it so that you can see that too. Actually, it's very hard to see. Oh, let me go back to the spotlight and show you the light cookie. So the light cookie is actually, let me find it, flashlight cookie. Here's the file right here. Um, and I'm, all I do is drag and drop it on there. And there, as you can see, now we actually have some texture and some realistic uh, light cookiness applied to the light. And we can also see the laser pointer because I have the laser pointer turned on. So the laser pointer, first of all, I have it set to blue. It's a blue light source. And it's a directional light. And I can change the cookie size. So I can change how big or small I want that cookie. So let me control Z that because I liked it the way it was before. And then inside of calling mask, I have the exact same thing. Everything except uh, selected except for guns. So let me turn guns on and show you what that looks like on the gun itself. As you can see, the directional light makes a much bigger difference because the directional light, so if I even go back here, you can see this area behind the gun is still being lit up. But because this is always going to be behind the player, we don't actually have to worry about that. Uh, but it is projecting onto the gun right now because I have the gun layer selected along with everything else. Um, so I'm going to go here and unselect guns. And now it's lo no longer projecting onto the gun. Um, and then once again, oh, I have light mapping set to auto. I think I want that real time only. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to apply that to the prefab, which is my zombie gun. So I think that is pretty much everything that I need to show you um, as of right now. So let me go ahead and minimize Unity and let me open up Photoshop Elements uh, and let me show you how I actually created this. So I'm going to, or I'm going to show you how I created the flashlight cookie. And I'm going to select this image right here, which is a JPEG of me shining a flashlight onto a piece of paper. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background so that I can actually um, edit the size of this and then I'm going to rotate it like so. I'm going to apply that rotation and then I'm going to stretch it this way so that it is an actual circle and then why don't I change actually I'm going to crop around it so I'm going to make this a square image that's like that that looks pretty good okay so why don't I delete this layer because I don't need that anymore and I'm going to change the levels and make the darks a little darker the lights a little little lighter and I think that's pretty much how I want the flashlight to look and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press control A oops control A to select everything I'm going to copy it and then let's see how do I want to do this I'm going to create a layer mask actually no I'm not gonna do it on that layer I'm gonna control Z that I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer in as white. I'm going to disable that layer. I'm going to create a layer mask and I believe I just alt, alt click, alt right click. Um, how do I do this? Alt double click, control V, no. How do I do this? Okay, alt, no, I'm alt click. There we go. Now I control V. Perfect. Got it. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So now I'm going to alt click it again. And now I'm going to need to create a layer under this so that you can actually see what I just did because you can't really see it right now. So now when I fill it in, as you can see, basically what I have. All right. So when I have this layer disabled, you can see the checkerboard pattern in the background. So that's what you really need to know is this checkerboard pattern 
represents transparency. So where you can see the checkerboard pattern, that means that you can see through the image. Like anything will show up behind it when you put this image on top of something. So that's what we want. So this white area right here, so let me turn this on so that you can see it better. So everything that you can see is non-transparent. So when you're talking about light cookies, that's what you are looking at. You're looking at uh, what is not transparent and what is transparent. So I can change the color of this. So I'm going to colorize it um, a bright red. It doesn't matter. I can make this red. I can make it blue. I can make it whatever color I want. Unity doesn't care about that. All Unity cares about is what is transparent and what isn't. So if I were to export the image exactly the way it is right now with this black background right here, I would just get a giant square as a light cookie. So that is why I have to disable that and then I can save this as a PSD inside of my assets folder and then I will get this transparency and the non-transparency where the actual light is and that is basically how I created the light cookies. So for one more example, why don't we go to the laser pointer, uh, click on the zombie gun laser pointer light cookie, and open this up inside of Photoshop. So as you can see, first of all, it doesn't matter that it's blue. I just had it blue for, I, I have no idea, no particular reason. I guess just because that's the way I wanted it in the end and I wanted to visualize it. Um, but it doesn't need to be blue. It can be, uh, whoops, wrong button. It can be whatever color I want. The important part is that I have this checkerboard pattern where I want no light and I actually have solid color or solid image in the areas that I do want light. And so that is how I come up with this pattern. So as you can see, like in this little square right here, there is checkerboard pattern, which means the image is transparent in that spot so the light won't actually shine onto that spot so yeah so that it actually uh, creates a light cookie in that direction so when you're creating light cookies that's the only thing you need to take into consideration is areas of transparency and areas of non-transparency and um, I don't really think there's anything else really inside of here. I think it's just a general texture so you can just leave it as texture when you're importing your file and just, just leave it as a PSD or PNG or any kind of image type that keeps transparency. Um, let's see, what else is there that I need to show you guys about the laser pointer? I guess now I need to come up with the script to actually make it so that you can turn the laser pointer on and off. So why don't I open up the gun script? It's gonna take me a second. And bring it over here. All right, and let me find the spot where I actually have, okay, here we go. So I'm going to comment out that and comment out that. So basically what we have right here is a big if statement, which is saying if being held, which means whether or not we are holding the gun. And I have inside of that if statement, laser pointer dot enabled equal true. And laser pointer is a variable in which I saved the game object or the light component to be more specific of um, what the light was. And then I set the variable enabled to true, which means basically this turns the laser pointer on. And same goes for the flashlight. So let me find down here if being held equals false. I'm going to turn the laser pointer off. So I'm going to comment out that line of code because we want to create some new code uh, to actually make that happen whether or not we are pressing, let's see, key F and key V is the keys that we're going to use. So why don't we go inside of edit, project settings, input, and actually set up these keys. So let's see, use key, reload, pause, so let's set this number to 22 and it's going to duplicate the last one on our list and we're going to call this flash, wait did I spell flash right? No, flash light. And the button will be F. 
And I believe that is the only thing that we need to do for that. And now let's set this to 23. And let's create laser pointer. Actually, uh, let's make that capitalize for the sake of uniformity. Is un uniformity a real word? I don't really know. I might have just made that up, but who cares? And we're going to set this to V instead of F. And now we have our control set up. So you can set it to any letter that you want or really any key on the keyboard that you want. Or you can even uh, bind it to a button on a uh, Xbox 360 controller. It really doesn't matter. So whatever controls you want, you would do it inside of your input manager. All right, now let's go. Let's create a script inside of the folder scripts, and let's uh, make it a JavaScript. And we will put this on the gun itself. So let's call this uh, flash. Oops, flash, light, and laser pointer script. Okay, and let's apply that to the zombie gun. And now our zombie gun should have two scripts on it. And there it is. So let's open that up and add some stuff to it. So we have opened it up in here. Here we go. So let's get rid of pragma strict and function start. So I think we'll only need function update today. So let's make our first variable which will be um, flash oops flash light light so this will be the uh, light so let's see is it do I just light let me double check my gun script because I know I have it set up right in here um, and I'm going to press control F because it's a really long list and flash oops flash and let's go up until I actually not muzzle flash not that here we go flashlight oh it is of type light so that is what we are going to do here so flashlight and it is of type light now var laser pointer light and this is of type light so inside of these two variables here, let me go ahead and save it and just go inside of Unity so that we can actually see this and scroll down. So we have two variables right here. So we have the flashlight light and the laser pointer light. So we are going to take the laser pointer. So we're going to drag and drop the game object. And then when we drag and drop it on top of a variable inside of the inspector, uh, which is assigned to type light, it's going to automatically grab out the light component off of that game object and save that inside of the variable. So as you can see here, there's a little sun looking symbol, which and the word light inside of parentheses, which signifies that we are not saving the game object itself. We are saving the light component, which is attached to the game object. And that is this component here, the light. So let's go back to zombie gun and spotlight is the name of our flashlight and scroll down and we are going to drag and drop it on top of there. So now we have our flashlight saved and our laser pointer saved. So now we will access that through the script here. And now we need to do, uh, let's create a variable called uh, flash, whoops, flash light on, and this will be a boolean, and we're going to by default have it set to true, and we're going to do the same thing with the laser pointer. So laser pointer on boolean equal true. All right, so this is going to be a true and false variable that determines whether or not the uh, flashlight and laser pointer are actually on so that we can keep track of whether we're turning it on or turning it off. So now let's create a variable called already 
actually we can create this variable right inside of the update loop so let's have that let's go inside of the update loop and call it all wait we need to write var var already already checked and this will be a boolean and let's have it equal false so this is going to be a variable that we're going to turn on and off just to make sure um, well, it'll be easier if I just show you the code. So I'm going to do an if statement, which if in whoops input dot get button whoops can't type today button oops still spelled it wrong get button down and the button we are looking for is what I call it flashlight. I hope that's what I called it. So if we pressed the flashlight button and now we are going to, let's see, first we will just do if a flash, oops, flash light on is true, we're going to do flash light on equal false. And then we are also going to do inside of the same if statement so I need brackets so I'm going to put a bracket right here and I'm going to do already checked uh, equal true and then I'm going to do my closing bracket so now we have an if statement which if the flashlight is currently on we're going to set the variable flashlight on to false which means our flashlight is going to be off and then we're going to set already checked to true and now we're going to do an if new if statement that says if well, I need an exclamation mark which means false so if flash light on is false so that's what the exclamation mark means if flashlight on is false and already checked as false So the reason why we do this is because if I were to just delete this part and I didn't have that in there, uh, we would be we would basically go through this and say, okay, is the flashlight on? Yes, it is. Okay, let's turn it off. And then immediately afterwards we go, is the flashlight off? Uh, no, it's not. So let's turn it on. So basically we would just always have a turned on flashlight. So that's why we need to make sure that we didn't already just turn it on inside of this frame or in yeah inside of this frame inside of this update loop. Um, and ev at the beginning, we always set already checked to false uh, because at the very beginning of the frame, we haven't checked yet whether or not the flashlight is on or off. So now we just need one more statement inside of here. If the flashlight is off and we haven't checked it already, we are going to turn the flashlight on. So flashlight on equal true. And now let's put um, something else after this, which is a statement, which basically means let's just do a uh, flash flashlight light. So this is the flash. This is the light component of the actual flashlight game object and uh, let's just have it oh whoops flashlight light dot enabled equal flashlight on so when we do this uh, flashlight light dot enabled so the dot enabled part basically is the same thing as this checkbox right here so that's false that's true so this is the variable enabled going on and off right here so enabled enabled equals false enabled equals true enabled equals false so you get it and so basically we're just having flashlight light dot enabled equal flashlight on because flashlight on because of this whole thing that we wrote right here is going to turn on and off whether or not we press uh, the F key and now let's go ahead and duplicate everything here and then just modify it. So let me go to where I need to go. Whoops. 
tab, enter, control V. Okay, perfect. So uh, already checked, we're going to set that to false one more time. And because it has been declared up here, we don't need it to be declared twice. So we just need to write already checked equals false. And then we are going to change this to laser pointer. Laser, oops, pointer. And the, all right, so if we pressed the button, which is the laser pointer, which I have personally assigned to the V key, and then we need to change this to laser pointer. And we're not, whoop, not, not what I wanted to do. And basically, we're going to change all of the word flashlight to laser pointer. Laser pointer on. Whoops. We have the word on twice. OK, there we go. And then we're going to change this to laser pointer on. And then we're going to change this to laser pointer on. And then we are going to do change this to laser pointer light. There we go, laser pointer light. And then we're going to change this to laser pointer on. So basically, the exact same thing that we have up here is now down here, uh, except we changed all of the word flashlight to laser pointer. So all of this is doing the same thing as we have up here, except for the uh, laser pointer. And we can use the same variable already checked because we are resetting it back to false up here. Now that we have all of our calculations done for the flashlight, we can do the exact same thing for the laser pointer. So let's go ahead and give that a save. And let's go in here instead of the zombie gun. Um, that's all the variables that we need to set up. So let's go ahead and go up here and click apply. And why don't we move uh, this zombie gun? I'm going to move it up to the point where I'm going to spawn uh, when I actually play, which is over here. So let me find out if this is where I need a zombie gun to test out whether or not this is working. And that should be a good spot. So I'm going to give that a save and give it a play. And hopefully, oh, compiler error. All right. What is the compiler error? Uh, it said unknown variable flashlight on. So I must have spelled it wrong. Oh, I spelled this wrong. Oops. GH flashlight on. So let's save that. And I probably actually here, I'm going to press Control F. And I'm going to find everything that says how did I have it spelled before? Flash light g -h. wait no. Flashlight h -g -t. And let's change that to Flash light gehuta, the correct spelling. And then let's do all. And I think that has saved our problem. So that has fixed my spelling. And now let's see if I can play the game. It looks like I can play the game. So now I'm going to cut the video, or hopefully remember to cut the video while the game is actually loading. All right, so the game has loaded. And as you can see, we have the zombie gun on the ground right here. And the laser pointer and flashlight is on and we don't actually probably want that or maybe you do in your game maybe you like that effect but it's uh, pretty stressful on your gpu so you probably don't want to do that so you're gonna want to add some code inside of your game to make it so that your gun uh is turned or the lights on your gun are turned off when you are not holding it so let's go ahead and pick it up and test it out so i'm going to press the f key and it works. I can turn the flashlight on and off. And the V key, I can turn the laser pointer on and off. So of course, we could also add some sound effects, which uh, would be pretty easy to do. Uh, basically, just to add sound effects, the only thing that you would need to do is inside of this if statement right here, uh, you would basically do 
audio source dot play and then you would save a variable up here for what the audio source variable that you want or basically you would just play a sound effect at these two parts here whichever sound effect you want accordingly so I'm just going to put a comment that says sound effect and sound oops, effect so that is where you would want the clicking sound of your flashlight turning on and off uh, but I don't actually have a sound effect right now for that I will probably add that later and maybe add it in a tutorial uh, but hopefully this goes over pretty much everything you guys wanted to know about how the um, actual laser pointer and flashlight were made inside of Robot Zombies. Oh, one thing I do want to show you is the shotgun. Um, let me go ahead and pull out a shotgun. Let me find it. Let me, okay, so there's a zombie gun. There's a shotgun. So I'm going to grab the shotgun and drag and drop it right there. And I'm going to show you on the shotgun. Alright, so, oh, I can go here on the shotgun. I can just click laser pointer. So the laser pointer on the shotgun, as you can see, is actually a spotlight. And that is because I wanted the shotgun spotlight. Let me let me angle it so that you can see it better. Um, change that to local. So I wanted the shotgun to the shotgun light to actually get bigger the farther away you go. Uh, and that's because the shotgun bullets spread more the farther away you get from your target. So you can use a light cookie as your actual aiming source on a spotlight, just like you can with a directional light. It really doesn't matter. Um, but I just wanted to quickly show you that in case you were wondering how I did that on the shotgun. So on the shotgun, basically, I have two spotlights. Um, and yeah. So let me go ahead and delete that shotgun because I don't want those changes to be saved because I screwed screwed up the positioning of the laser pointer on that. And let me uh, delete this zombie gun because I don't actually want that in my level design. Um, but yes, so that is how I made the laser pointers and flashlight inside of Robot Zombies. So until my next episode, I'll see you guys later and keep making games.